All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about differentiation of real valued functions. A lot of results like the mean value theorem and L'Hopital's rule depend on the order structure of the real line. So there actually are major differences between say differentiation of real valued functions and then complex variables and vector valued functions. So even though all those uh, concepts of differentiation, so like the rate of change of a function, makes sense for those um, different types of functions, like your complex and vector valued ones, um, they're gonna be handled separately. Anyways, let's get on to the video. So before we talk about differentiation, we should probably recall the definition of it from um, like a calculus one class. Uh, so just like in a calculus one class, um, we're going to <coughs> define it like follows. So if f is a function from some closed interval into the real numbers, um, if you have a point x in that closed interval, then the following limit, if it exists, is going to be the derivative of f at the point x. And it's going, we're going to denote it like f prime of x, and it's going to be equal to the limit as h tends to zero of this quotient right here, which is the difference quotient. Um, so the limit is h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And we can also write it in this um, alternative way, uh, which would be to write the limit as t tends to x of f of t minus f of x over t minus x. Uh, so those are just two ways of stating the same exact thing. So now that we have the definition, uh, let's try to prove some basic properties. And so unless we otherwise state f and g are going to be functions from the closed interval a, b to the real numbers. And the first uh, property that we'll prove is that if f is differentiable at x, then it must be continuous at x as well. And to prove this, uh, we'll just have to do some manipulation with limits. Uh, so if we let t be in the open interval a, b, uh, with t not being equal to x, which is why we want it to be in that open interval um, and not the closed interval. Um, so to show that f of x um, is continuous at x, what we're going to show is that the limit as t tends to x of f of t is going to be equal to f of x. Um, so the left and right hand limit should be the same, uh, and that's what this encapsulates. So the limit as t tends to x of f of t minus f of x, we can we know that our function is uh, differentiable at x. So what we do is uh, multiply and divide by t minus x. Remember, t is not equal to x, so this is okay. And this is going to be a limit that we can actually compute. Um, because if we let t tend to x in this equation right here, we can actually compute the limits for the um, left-hand part and the right-hand part here um, by definition of the derivative. Uh, this limit as t tends to x of the difference quotient here should be that number f prime of x. So I'll just write that here. f prime of x right here. And then this limit right here, well, as t tends to x, well, <laughs> t goes to x, and then x stays the same. So to compute this limit, it's just x minus x, which is zero. And this f prime of x is just a number, 
and a number times zero is gonna be zero. So this limit right here is gonna come out to be zero. So the limit as t tends to x of f of t minus f of x should be equal to the same thing as this limit, which we figured out was zero. And so now we have this equality right here. And now to show that the limit as t tends to x of f of t better equal f of x, uh, we need to realize that as t tends to x, f of x goes to, well, f of x. It's not a function of t in any way. Uh, it's just like a constant. Um, and at this entire limit, we know this entire limit converges to zero. Um, and if one part converges, uh, then the other part must as well. Uh, this would not be the case if we didn't know that information about f of x. So it's actually very important that we know this converges to, well, f of x. Uh, because that al allows us to assert that the limit as t tends to x of f of t better equal f of x. And that's all we have to do for this proof. And we're done. Because this is um, another criterion of continuity as well. Um, so we don't have to do the epsilon delta type proof. Uh, this is a sufficient condition. <clears throat> now the converse to that statement, if it is continuous, uh, then it must be differentiable, is a false statement. Because if we have the function then this is continuous uh, because both the left and the right hand limits are both equal to zero at x equals zero. Uh, so it's continuous at this point. However, the um, derivative uh, when we approach from the left hand side of the point x equals zero, uh, our derivative is negative one but from the, uh, my bad, whenever we approach from the right, uh, no, I was correct. Whenever we approach from the left, uh, our derivative is negative one, but whenever we approach from the right hand side, uh, our derivative is one. And these limits are not equal, um, so it cannot be differentiable at this point. Uh, so that's a simple example that you can use to show that that converse is false. So if it's differentiable, it must be continuous at that point. Um, however, it is not necessarily true that if it is continuous, then it must be differentiable. Uh, it's pretty easy to construct examples like this where it is not differentiable at isolated points. Uh, but there's actually um, a whole class of functions um, that are continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere. An example of this would be the Weierstrass function. All right, now that we got um, that out of the way, um, we can use uh, that previous result uh, to prove some of our uh, calculus one derivative rules, uh, namely the linearity of the derivative, uh, the product rule, and the quotient rule. Uh, we'll do the chain rule in the next video because that requires a little bit more work. Um, so linearity of the derivative, um, it actually just comes from the fact that uh, limits of convergent um, sums um, can be broken up with the algebraic limit theorem. Uh, but to get more experience um, with doing proofs involving derivatives, uh, I'll show it anyways. So um, if we want to take the derivative of f plus g at x, 
to compute this? Well, our difference quotient is going to be um, f of t plus f of, um, yeah, my bad, f of t plus g of t minus, and then in parentheses, f of x plus g of x. And then doing some algebra, uh, we've got um, f of t minus f of x, and then g of t uh, minus g of x. And then since we can split those two parts up over uh, t minus x, uh, we get this right here. And since we're taking the limit as t tends to x of these two parts, um, we can use the algebraic limit theorem here because the limit as t tends to x of this part, well, we know it must be differentiable um, at x, um, and this part as well, g, is differentiable at x, uh, so this limit is f prime of x, and this limit is g prime of x, and so this entire limit by the algebraic limit theorem will be f prime of x plus g prime of x. <coughs> now to do number two, uh, to do the product rule. So in other words, if both the functions f and g are differentiable at x, then this will be the derivative of the product. Um, and it kind of requires adding what I call a clever zero. Uh, basically, we're going to add and subtract something and that'll help us um, basically uh, get us in a situation like this, where we can take limits of two different parts. So the clever zero that we're going to add is going to be f of x g of t. So if we write out the definition of the derivative of f times g, we get that we have f of t g of t, minus f of x g of x and then here's where we add and subtract f of x g of t so whenever we do that f of t g of t from here and then we're adding our clever zero so we add f of x g of t and subtract f of x g of t because that won't change the limit because we're technically adding zero and then we subtract off f of x g of x and so it may not make sense why we'd want to do that however um, these first two terms right here we can break it off as follows we can factor off a g of t because both these terms contain a g of t and then we have f of t minus f of x and then we can divide that by t minus x Remember, because this was a common factor in both these expressions. And then we do a similar thing for the right-hand side of this. Uh, we factor out an f of x here. And then what we're left with is g of t minus g of x. And then we divide by t minus x. Remember, the f of x is out here because it's a common factor between these two terms, and rewriting it like this will help us out a lot, because if we just look at this um, left, uh, left side real quick, uh, if we want to compute this limit right here, we know it must be differentiable at this point, so the limit as t tends to x of this difference quotient should be f prime of x. And then here is where we need to use that previous result. Um, so since it's differentiable at x, it must be continuous at x. So the limit as t tends to x by the continuity 
of g at t f at x, this limit must come out to be g of x. So it's actually really important that it must be continuous at x as well, which we can guarantee since it's differentiable at x. So the limit as t tends to x of this term right here is f prime of x times g of x. And then here, we don't have to make any fancy argument. The limit is f of x. And then right here, the limit will be g prime of x. Because once again, it must be differentiable at x. So this limit will just come out to be g prime of x. And so from this, we get that this limit right here, remember using the algebraic limit theorem, that the entire limit comes out to be f prime of x from this term right here times g of, whoops, this should be an x right here, times g of x, because remember it must be continuous at x because it's differentiable at x, plus f of x from this term right here, times the derivative of g at x. And then proving the quotient rule uh, requires adding another clever zero. That's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so I recommend you try that on your own. I might post a proof in the comments, but I think you should try it first. And all right, that's all I got for this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and comment if you have any questions.